Is this the best hardtail in the world? Oh man, I'm excited for this one. Last week was bad and I don't even wanna talk about it and I shouldn't have broke these rules for season one of Hardtail Quest, but if you missed it, definitely go check it out and watch it. But we ended up with a leaderboard looking like this and I will be getting a medium frame in a few weeks to test out to see if it performs any better. But before I build up this beautiful frame, I gotta rip off all of my parts off the Roscoe, get that bike back to stock because I gotta send it back to the pros closet. This video is sponsored by DJI and they've just released a brand new product, the Osmo Action 4. This new camera isn't a full revamp, just like the three, it has a magnetic mount, super long battery life, 4K, 120 FPS, and super wide field of view. It's even the same size and shape, so my case, accessories, and batteries all fit the new version. But it is lighter though. The big change is the new sensor. This new sensor will enhance low light performance and it has the most accurate colors that I've ever seen. I mean, this footage looks like real life once I pull it into the computer. No adjustments needed. Now, low light might not sound like something that you need if you don't ride in the evening, but if you do ride in and out of shade, it is just much better now. Pretty much perfect and I'm just blown away. So later on, I'm gonna have a side quest. I'm going to be comparing the footage from the new DJI Osmo Action 4 against the GoPro Hero 11, and you'll have to tell me which one is better. Now with that trek behind us, it's time to check out this beautiful hardtail, a Banshee Paradox V3, the most expensive hardtail frame that we've tested. But first, a little ASMR. Well, how satisfying was that? This Banshee Paradox frame is just a work of art and I am just super excited to try out an exotic hardtail. And the build quality of this frame is probably the best that I've ever seen and I just love raw aluminum. I mean, check out my first ever BMX frame right here. This is my 1997, oops, Powerlite Junior and look, silver. The Banshee is a raw or maybe it's brushed aluminum with a clear coat and the welds are the best that we've seen so far. The cable routing is a hybrid external and internal cable routing, but it even came pre-installed with headset cups and a goodie bag with a C-post clamp and an extra derailleur hanger. This is definitely the most expensive frame that we tested at $960, but will those few extra hundred bucks make a difference? I sure hope so. I would give this bike a five out of five on build quality, but I would have liked to see some water bottle cage mounts, even if it was on the underbelly of the down tube, 4.9. And then you have the tubing shape. And this is where I am super intrigued. If you look near the C post, there's these flat pieces welded together, you know, hollowed out if you will. And I really wonder if this is gonna act as a flex point to make this frame super compliant. Every single tube on this frame is hydroformed, or well, maybe not the C post, but I have really, really high hopes for this frame and I'm gonna give the tubing shape a five out of five. Now that we're halfway through season one of Hardtail Quest, I'm starting to understand some geometry numbers that I really like and some that I don't like. Well, with this Banshee, it really checks off some geometry numbers that I love from the previous frames and also some geometry numbers that are kind of concerning. First is the all important reach. The Trek just felt too big with a 455 millimeter reach and then the Scout had a 440 reach, a tad small, but rode great. Well, the Banshee Paradox is just a tad bigger than the Scout with a 443 millimeter reach, so that might feel a touch better than the Scout, which is currently ranked number one. There are some geometry numbers that I'm worried about, like the bottom bracket height being the highest out of all the bikes. And I thought with a Scout that I felt kind of high up, but it turns out that had the lowest bottom bracket, and I really like that. The head tube angle and the wheelbase are very moderate right there in the middle of all the other frames. 
And I'm pretty glad they didn't just make the geometry just hardcore in every sense. Then there's some numbers that really stand out more than all the frames. The stack height is 651 millimeters, right up there with the Scout, and I really like that tall bar feeling. Then the chain stay is 425 millimeters, the shortest out of all the bikes. And I really like the Trex short chain stay, and maybe this Banshee will be even better at doing wheelies. Lastly, the C2 Mangle is the steepest by far at 76.3 degrees, and that could really help with steep tech climbs or just overall comfort while sitting on the seat. And sitting down on the saddle is really where most of the time is spent on the bike. So with this bike having some extreme yet middle of the road geometry numbers, this could be interesting. And I have a lot of questions on how this is gonna go. But with that, the bike is complete and dude, doesn't this look amazing? So what do you guys think? Is this the best looking bike so far? But I'm actually gonna take away some points before we even go ride this thing. I think with the build quality, the cable routing could have been a bit better. And down here by the bottom bracket, the cables are just kind of touching the frame. And I don't know if that's gonna lead to rattling. So I'm gonna reduce the build quality down to 4.7. And then with the tubing shape, man, this head tube is so dang long. I almost didn't get to use my fork. And then the front triangle could have been a bit bigger so I could fit a bigger water bottle. So I'm gonna reduce the tubing shape down to 4.7. But with the looks, man, you guys know I have a soft spot in my heart for raw aluminum. And I, I even like the decals, how they're just super subtle. And then the, the logo on the bottom, you wouldn't be able to see unless you're throwing a major flatty. So I'm gonna give the looks a, a five out of five. <laughs> but that makes this bike, this frame, the new virtual leader before even hitting the trails. But that's the same thing that happened with the Trek and look how that went. Let's go ride. All right, we're back at Slaughter Pen for yet another test. And I actually rode this bike yesterday. I, I haven't really mentioned that except in the comments, but I'm doing about six hours of riding time on all of these frames to get a really good opinion. But yeah, yesterday I rode this bike and it didn't go that well. And actually, I almost wiped out a couple of times. So what, what's going on is the bars feel kind of low. And I think that's because the bottom bracket is so high up. So I actually put a uh, taller rise bar on here and I also felt a little cramped and I put a longer stem on so hopefully that makes a big difference but let's see how this bike rides All right, warm up complete. Feels a little bit better, but I'm still a little bit worried. But let's go test out some single track. Oh yeah, wheelie's good. Oh yeah. Well, not a bad climber. It's kind of average. I'll give it a 3.7. Oh great, right into a tech climb. It's too early for this. Oh, I made it. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm gonna revise the uh, climbing down to 3.2 actually. Um, this bike is just so tall, so high up. And the C-tube is like really vertical. So like I am just like sitting straight up. And I bet people would like that for those who don't like climbing that much. But for me, it's like, I like grinding out those miles. So this, not the most comfortable climber. Not bad. I think I have an idea of how this bike rides and like what it wants. But I can't quite comment on that just yet until I do some further testing on uh, some chunk. But single track, single track is not bad. I think I'm gonna give this single track a, oh, I'll give this single track a 4.2. This is uh, pretty nimble. One more thing about single track, and it feels kind of dorky to say this, but I actually kind of feel like I'm pretty fast on this bike. It, it just like rolls really good. 
but I know that's kind of a dorky thing to say, but let's go find some jumps and test out this new action camera. All right, we have arrived. This is a brand new trail in Benville. It's like a flow trail. I don't even know what it's called, but we can test out the DJI Osmo Action 4 against the GoPro Hero 11, and you guys decide which one's better. Yeah, so pretty much every one of these action cameras is gonna look great in the sun. And DJI even sells these uh, ND filters to make it look more cinematic. But it's when we get into the shade and filter sunlight when these cameras really struggle. Oh yeah. Well, this thing corners well, but that trail, it's fun and all. That is not long enough to test out the flow, the jumping and the cornering, and to test out these cameras, so we gotta keep moving. All right, time for some flow. Yeah. All right, well, I just checked out the GoPro footage and man, I had it on what it was defaulted to and man, everything just looks orange. So I changed a few things around. Whoa, yeah. Yeah, I changed a few things around to try to get it close to the DJI. But man, I just don't like that hyper view. It looks so distorted. Yeah, the flow is just kind of average. Nothing too crazy. I'm gonna give the flow a 3.5. So a lot of people say, but GoPro is better if you change all the settings. So I reached out to my friend MTB Allen for some pro GoPro settings and then I navigated the atrocious menu, but hopefully this run will be better for the GoPro, and I'll even switch to ND filters on both cameras midway through this run. All right, time for some jumps and cornering. Oh yeah. Yeah, hopefully these GoPro settings are good, because I hate having to stress about the footage. It's good or not. Oh, case. Case. This bike corners well though, I'll say that. Manual's pretty good too. That's not that's not one of the criteria though. I'm gonna give the cornering a 4.7. Here comes the jumps. Yeah. Little windy though. Kinda loose. Oh. <laughs> oh no, I got this. Alright. The jumping. Oh. I'm still kind of timid about jumping after almost going down yesterday. And I just don't feel like this bike is that good of a jumper. So I'm gonna give the jumping a three actually. Sorry, sorry, it is what it is. But uh, I think I have an idea of what this bike is built for. And that brings us to compliance and chunk. Let's go hit it. So while I'm heading to go find some tech climbs and chunk, what do you guys think? Is the DJI Osmo Action 4 better or the GoPro Hero 11 better? I think GoPro tries to lure people in with their unrealistic colors, oversaturated if you will, but DJI's colors just look absolutely perfect, pretty much like real life. And everybody knows that GoPro is just super glitchy and it has random shutoffs. And plus, if you watch GoPro footage in 1080p, it's like super blocky. And I've had a lot of people complain about that before with my footage. The DJI is just flawless and I've never had an issue with it cutting out, unexpected shutdowns, it's just a super great camera for people that want to just slap a camera on your chest and record some shredding, but it's also a perfect camera for content creators like me or someone who's aspiring to be one. So if you want to check out the DJI Osmo Action 4 for yourself, I'll have a link in the description and I highly recommend the Adventure Bundle. But all right, here we are, Tech Climbs. All right, here's the Tech Climb. Let's go. Oh man, this bike is so good at tech climbing. I'm gonna give the tech climbing, it's actually kind of surprising. I'm gonna give the tech climbing a five out of five because I've never been able to climb that before. And that was actually super easy. So I don't know, this bike is strange, but let's test out some chunk. All right, time for some chunk. This one's called Dragon Scales. It is so dang hot today. 
sweat is like dumping in my eyeball. Oh yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, I figured this bike out and it's right here on this trunk. This trunk is so good. I'm gonna give it a five out of five. Yeah. Well, all right, man. I'm glad I figured out that bike right there at the end. I was getting worried about the compliance and I really had high hopes for how, how this bike absorbed bumps because of this little flex stay right here. And I expected this thing to be flex nonstop, but it really is only working on the big hits in the rock gardens. I almost feel like I had like a shock on the rear end that was like really st a stiff shock, but it, it definitely flexes a lot in a good way on the chunk and not so much on the single track. And for that reason, I'll give the overall compliance, a, I'll give it a four, but let's head back to the shop. We'll talk about the fit and we'll talk about where this bike is probably best at. This Banshee Paradox is an actual, true, hardcore hardtail. And this frame belongs on the roughest, most technical trails, but that does not fit my criteria. And the bike is just kind of strange in other areas. And remember, I'm grading on categories being weighted for importance, with single track being a major factor. I want a hardtail that's really fun on my local trails. So let's see what the overall score comes out to. The last score to give is the fit. And like I was saying, this bike felt tall, but I also felt kind of crammed because of the steep seat posts and the lower reach. The long stem definitely helped it out, but I was just never able to get comfortable on the frame. So I'm gonna give the fit a 3.5. But I could admit that I wanted this frame to win this entire series. I just love how it looks, but I can separate that while scoring and riding these things. So it's a bummer to say that the overall score comes out to 80 out of 100, making this Banshee Paradox a distant second to the leader, the Nuke Proof Scout. Join us next week as we test out a fan favorite, Rocky Mountain Growler. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on all eight episodes of Hardtail Quiz.